You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. As I say, another big story happening in the nation's capital today uh, took place at the Supreme Court where our Allen's racial discrimination, discrimination case against Comcast came before the nine justices. Eight were there. Ruth Bader Ginsburg was ill and was not in the court today. Now, at issue is whether Allen's $20 billion lawsuit should have survived beyond the pleading stage by merely pr proving that his race was a motivating factor in Comcast's decision to deny carriage to his company's channel. Now, the Ninth Circuit ruled in favor of Allen last year, and some of the justices found fault with the lower court's reasoning. Joining me not right now to talk about what happened today is Byron Allen, CEO <coughs> of Entertainment Studios. Byron, glad to have you here. Your Thank thoughts. you. Thank uh, you for having me. I appreciate it. Appreciate and congratulations it. on your show. Oh, really appreciate you. Thanks a bunch. So yeah. today, your yes. assessment. What are you, your thoughts about what happened today? What did you hear? Um, did you think that the questions went well for you? Your thoughts. I thought it went very well, and our attorneys, uh, especially Dean Chimarinsky, who is the foremost scholar on constitutional law and has written eleven books on the subject, he felt great about it as well. I think it's very clear. Uh, that it is a motivating factor and not but for. Uh, this was put on the books 153 years ago to protect the newly freed slaves to make sure that... Uh, Civil Rights Act. Civil Rights Act, uh, to make sure there was a pathway for economic inclusion. And it wasn't set, you know, for the impossible standard that you must prove that 100% of the reason that I, uh, I am not doing business with, with Roland, 100% is that he's black. And unless you can prove that it's 100%, Roland can't even bring the mark bring the law forward so they literally could say look it's 99 percent because you're black and one percent because you're wearing tennis shoes and you can't use the law that's the motivating you know that's the but for standard what the ninth circuit said the motivating factor which is if any part of the decision is because roland is mar black that you didn't do it that's enough for roland to simply use the law and bring it forward and i think the questions were really terrific from the justices because they were like well hey the, you know, Roland doesn't know what he doesn't know. He has to go into discovery to find out what's going on. I mean, like in our case, you know, look at our particular case with Comcast. They say things like, well, we don't do business with Byron because his his networks have have low, they're lowly rated. They have the low ratings. Well, you know, listen, we could, in discovery, we can show the world that they have over 100 networks on their platform that are white owned that have a lower rating than ours. Then they'll say things, well, he doesn't have good quality. It's low quality. Well, our networks are Emmy Award nominated and Emmy Award winning. And we, through discovery, we can show that they carry networks, over 100 networks that are white owned, that have never been nominated for an Emmy and have never won an Emmy. Um, they will say things like, this is, uh, you know, this has nothing to do with race. Well, you know, they've already proven by going and partnering with, with Donald Trump's DOJ to get an amicus brief that this, you know, that there's a great deal of racial, uh, uh, you know, there's institutionalized racism mm -hmm. there. I mean, not only did they get Donald Trump's DOJ to write the amicus brief, they did something we haven't seen in, in ever, which is they got Donald Trump's DOJ to testify, to argue in the courtroom with them in partnership and it is the very first time the acting solicitor general has ever gone into the United States Supreme Court to narrow a civil rights statute. So it just shows that Comcast isn't sincere when they talk about, hey, we're in business with Magic Johnson, we're in business with P. Diddy. We never said that they didn't do business with black people. That was never, oh, we put out Harriet. What we said is there isn't any real true economic inclusion. Here's what Comcast won't say, and my mother always says, listen for what they don't say. What they won't say to Roland and the rest of the world, we, Comcast, spend over $11 billion a year licensing cable networks, and African Americans get close to zero of that. In the case of one of those people that they tout as we're in business with, one of them doesn't get one penny of that $11 billion. They've said to them, just sell your commercials and live off the commercials. So let's, let's, let's unpack this. There are seven networks that target African Americans. Yes. You've got BET and their sister network. Which is owned by Viacom. And BET Her, owned by Viacom. Yes. 
you got TV One yes. and their network Clio TV, yes. where publicly traded company controlling shareholders are Alfred Liggins and Kathy Hughes, his Who mother. I love. Who I love. Uh, and, and so, and you go to their website, they say they are largest black owned media company uh, in the country. Then you have uh, Aspire TV, uh, which was one of the networks that went to Magic Johnson. Yes. Uh, and then you have Revolt, and then of course you have Own Oprah's Network. Yes. And so, um, how do you respond uh, to that in terms of them having carriage deals with those networks um, that, again, yes, Viacom owns BET, the case of TV One, it's a black-owned network. Yes. How do you respond to that? Well, like I said, you know, you have to look at the numbers, and that's what the discovery will tell you. Exactly how much economic inclusion are they getting out of the $11 billion? And for the people who don't understand the cable industry, the reality is um, most, well, not most, but the way the deal works is there are some people who have carriage, yes. but aren't getting subscription fees, yes. and they're simply making their money off advertising. That's right. There are other folks who do get subscription fees, and so it may run from two cents to seven cents to, uh, like ESPN had the highest subscription fees out of everybody. They were getting upwards of six, seven bucks from every subscriber. Even higher. So when those you pay were, your cable bill, eight dollars goes to ESPN. Those were, and those goes were seven to ten year contracts, yeah. money locked in. Yes. Uh, and so, billions so, so and guaranteed. billions of dollars throughout the industry. So when people also, also, you also have, I forgot, Africa Channel. Yes. Uh, Paula Madison and her brother uh, owns uh, owns that um, yes. uh, network. So, again, so what people don't understand is that they assume that every company is getting subscription fees. They're not. That's some right. are, some are not. That's it's right. based upon the negotiation with the cable company. Yeah, that's right. And that's what I've said. I said through the discovery, we'll show that David Cohen, uh, whose personal compensation is uh, $20 million a year, and Brian Roberts, his annual personal compensation is $35 million a year. You can pick either one of them, and they take out personally more than they pay all of black-owned media combined. They don't get paid sub fees. As a matter of fact, if you Google it, March of 2018, uh, Revolt had to lay off a third of their staff because they're not getting enough support. As a matter of fact, Revolt didn't even get half of the subscribers that Comcast has to offer, and they didn't even give Revolt Philadelphia, as if there are no African Americans there. So here's the problem. Now, it, it, it went very well in the Supreme Court. It's a big problem for, for Comcast. Pretty much the justices told the world, this case needs to go forward. They pretty much said it. Now, we, hopefully, we will go forward. We can now get the contracts. We can show the world everything that they're not doing. You know, that's what's key. You have to be able to look at that. You have to have your right to have access to that information. They're not spending money and doing business with us. They put us out there as window dressing, but when it comes to the $11 billion, that's what the question is. Of the $11 billion, how much is African-American-owned media mm -hmm. participating in that amount of capital? And that number is closer to zero than perhaps what it should be, which is 10 percent, 1.1 billion. So 1.1 billion, now there's more than enough money for Roland to do whatever he needs to do. He's truly there. He's, he has a seat at the table. He's getting real economic inclusion. Why is that important? Well, a lot of the money that Comcast is pulling out of the, out of the African-American community doesn't come back to us. To be the number one cable op provider in America, you have to hook up all the black cities, all the major black cities. They're literally pulling billions out of our community. Oh, and of course, money is coming from obviously cable systems, from internet, yes. also set-top boxes, yes. all of those different things. You yes. made it, you, you said before that if Supreme Court rules in favor of Comcast, this is going to set black businesses back. How? Oh, wow. I mean, listen, uh, it, you, you won't be able to get an attorney. If somebody uh, says, to, uh, you know, I, I, listen, Martin, let me be really clear. Uh, I'm firing you, and 99% of it, Martin, is because you're black. Now, the other 1%, once again, it's the tennis shoes. Well, you're going to have a tough time getting a lawyer to represent you on contingency. Now, they can discriminate against you. Because they're... Because, they they but, put it because, at the but four. Because, they, right, the but four meaning it the has to be... The sole reason. It has to be 100%. 100%. The sole reason. Right? So now they put the standard at a level that's impossible to achieve. So now I'm positioned, now they're positioned to, to discriminate against you, and you're not able to use the law to protect yourself and have any recourse. And when they start stripping away your rights, 
and you're watching that as play out this week, whether it was DACA yesterday, and they're going after everybody's rights. Uh, the moment they have your rights, then they can, you know, you're, you know, basically they can treat you like a stray dog. So having this right is important. Just it was, it's a simple statute, and some historians believe that the reason we never got, you know, you know, reciprocity, and we never got 40 acres and a mule, is we got this law. We got this law that says here is a pathway for economic inclusion, and now they're shutting it down. And you know, when I say, listen, if you, Comcast, if you really believe you have a strong case and you really believe that you are phenomenal, then let's just go into the courtroom. You don't have to go to the Supreme Court and jeopardize the civil rights of over 100 million minorities in America. Let's just go and, and show everybody the paperwork. Let's show everybody that you're spending over $11 billion a year licensing cable networks and the people you tout as the ones you're in business with don't get any subscriber fees. See, their big problem is we know somebody that was in the room when the MOU was crafted. And they told us. When you say the MOU. The, the Memorandum of Understanding for Black that? People. And this so, is the, so, 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 when, so when Comcast was looking to acquire NBC, NBC Universal, Universal uh, they were under severe criticism by Congresswoman Maxine Waters and, and others, many others. Uh, and many other groups. That they, they shouldn't did, get this big. And what they then did was they then went to their civil rights groups yep. for their support. That's right. Crafted this mem 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 Memorandum of Understanding. That's right. And then uh, in order for them to be. Uh, to get their blessings to go before the uh, court system. That's exactly right. So when you when you look at that, it, I'm not the court system for the federal government to approve the the acquisition merger. Go ahead. That's exactly right. So you know when you when you look at this this MOU, you can get into the details of that MOU. You can see that you know we can get in there and we can say, okay, what exactly was going on here? That you this person said they were in the room, right? They said, look, this MOU was legally and financially engineered so that they could fail. They, this is what someone... say they. The, Magic and P. Diddy could fail. This is what I was told. That's what will come out in this hearing. This person's going to say, and discovered, this person's going to say under testimony, under oath, it was crafted for them to fail. And they purposely picked Magic and P. Diddy because they knew that if they failed, when they failed, that they wouldn't make a stink about it because it would go against their brand and their brand is success. So Magic and P. Diddy are pretty much victims in this as well. They are pretty much victims in this as well because they weren't given enough to succeed. You don't... Well, well in fact, I, I, mean, I know for a fact that... At the level they should. Well, I know for a fact when TV One launched um, um, the investment... Jonathan Rogers had $130 million. Jonathan Rogers was the founding CEO. Yes. Had $130 million uh, to build the network over four years. I know for a fact that when Revolt actually launched, they had $65 million. Mm -hmm. And one of the issues, uh, based on people who I know who worked there, is that Revolt was undercapitalized from the beginning. Uh, and, and didn't get enough support from Comcast. Did not. How, do you, uh, how are you not going to give them Philadelphia or high enough sub fees? I mean, you know, Google it. March of 2018... P. Diddy, who I think is phenomenal, and he's a great businessman, he had to, you know, lay off a third of his staff. And it wasn't his fault. He was positioned to fail. And when you get into the details mm -hmm. of what they did or did not do, and that you can only get there with discovery. You need people to come in and testify. Mm -hmm. They were in the room. Here's what they saw. Here's what they asked for. Here's what they said. Here's what the contracts say. You're able to show other networks that are getting infinitely more support. They are, if you are so right, then why are you trying to eviscerate this civil rights statute so that we can't even go forth and bring discovery? I want you to respond to this. So, uh, John, John Hope Bryant, Operation Hope, talks about sil silver rights. Yeah. Uh, talks about black folks not getting the memo. Dropped a video on Facebook uh, last night and said that this is really a economic case for the individual versus a civil rights case. And so I want to play that. I want to get your thoughts to it. Go to my iPad, please. It, it, there are black hole companies who got the contract and they're this one that didn't it, it either is I don't like you and that could be racist or you didn't meet some objective criteria which might be demand in other words people wanting to subscribe to your your business that, that doesn't meet the minimum bar for our company and a company like Comcast or whoever you want to pick um, AT&T whoever you know whatever your company would be it's gonna be a different bar than say Joe's cable company in 
Lower Mississippi. In other words, if a local cable company or a local company is going to have a different bar, a different criteria than a regional company, a national company, and a global company. And if you want to do business with them, you got to meet the criteria. I get it all the time. People are like, you know, John, I love you, but you know, if you want to be a big baller, only in real estate is $100 million is not a big a big number. They're like, you, you can't, you can't, $100 million is not enough. I got to grow this to $500 million to a billion in order to have the impact for my people I want in my own business plan, which is why I'm continuing to uh, to to grow my platform. This is my for-profit, of course, not my not my non-profit. They're completely 100% uh, separate, separate business team, but manager teams, all that kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, and so if you want to have impact, you have to have scale, right? And if you want to have to scale, if you want to keep stepping up, there's different different criteria for different folks and uh, in, in, in different strokes. So I think this is a commercial dispute. I think that it is wrongly placed to say that this is going to send black folks back 150 years. It's just, I don't think, respectfully not true. Why? Because there's already a Kathy Hughes, there's already a Bob Johnson, there's already uh, you know a, a dozen companies that you can cite that have done business with all these companies, including Comcast. So this, if, that, if race was the only issue, then none of them wouldn't have done a deal. How are they doing a deal and somebody else isn't? You know, maybe it's product, maybe it's content, maybe people just don't like them, maybe they don't like the way it does business. I don't know. It's not my bill, but it, that's just a commercial dispute. Don't drag the entire black culture uh, into this dispute in this way. I think it's I think it's uh, a distraction from things that are really, truly important. I respect Mr. Allen. I think he's, he's doing in business. The response. Listen, uh, I would be the first to say, don't bring this civil rights statute into the United States Supreme Court. And I didn't. Comcast did. They decided to challenge that statute and how it was used and how it was applied. You filed a lawsuit Use based it. upon using, using the statute. statute. They are the ones who said, we're going to go after the statute, eviscerate it, and dismantle it. And I disagree with him. Uh, he doesn't know the entire history. You know. You know before the, there was uh, TV1, there was something called the Black Family Channel. But the difference between the black family before channel, that was they were actually called major broadcast the cable network. That's right. But before the black, I didn't work for them. Right. Yeah. But before the black family channel, which was all 100% African American owned, it was four African American entrepreneurs who got crushed by Comcast and they got pushed out of the way and they wrote up a lawsuit that I that they never filed and I saw and you know who who owned a major chunk of TV One, who owned a major chunk oh, of Comcast. And okay. And so and in fact so, at Rainbow Push. Um, I forgot the year, but I actually have the video. Uh, yes. Kathy Hughes actually complained yeah, okay. in a keynote speech. Yes. Uh, like I say, I got the video and I was at home. Right. Uh, she complained that uh, it was unfair for TV One in order for them to launch uh, the network that they had to give a sizable equity stake to Comcast. I also know, I also know, and again, for folks who don't realize it, just so y'all understand, I, like this, he this, doesn't this, realize well, it. Well, just and, for the folks who don't and, know, I mean... Right, I, you know, so but he's that, speaking on something he doesn't know. So I'll get and that's the problem. You have too many black folks who just don't know and don't know enough to say nothing. He doesn't know. So go ahead and school him. So no, just so the major... So just, just for the folks at home, again, who don't understand how these things happen, first of all, you used to have laws that prevented... Uh, networks from owning distribution outlets. Then it was called. Then you have fi FinCEN. Those laws were all, all separated. Go ahead. Now you have st studios that are able to produce shows, preach, and also sell those shows. And so what happened is, and I can tell you, I was on one of those calls, a major broadcasting cable network. There were two LLCs that own M M NBC. The Willie Gary LLC was Cecil Field with Spencer uh, and um, and uh, Evander Holyfield. That was a separate uh, Alvin, J Alvin James and Marlon Jackson. That's right. And there was a meeting with Directv, and Directv wanted an equity stake in NBC in order to carry them on their system. That's right. Um, and actually, the reason, just so y'all also know, the reason Dish to this day does not carry TV One is because Charlie Ergen believed that he was given an opportunity for an equity stake in TV One. And Alfred Liggins chose to give that equity stake to DirecTV, and Ergen to this day has refused to put TV One on Dish. I know this for a fact, uh, and so, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of the cable systems have equity stakes in the cable networks. That's right. Because they essentially said, 
in order for you to get carriage, we got to get an equity stake in your company. And what happened with Comcast and TV One? So yeah, Comcast did that, and then eventually TV One uh, did a billion did a did a debt buyout. Um, first well, of all, did a buyout. But Comcast yeah. owned a major yeah, piece. Comcast of, owned about forty percent of TV One. Of TV One and TV One bought, uh, bought, bought them out. Took, took on about a lot, billion dollars in debt. Took on a lot of debt to buy them out. Right. Okay. I would be the first to say. They never should have owned one piece of that network. It was African-American targeted and it was African-American owned. And that company took on crippling debt because of how Comcast was predatory towards them. Now, if you simply look at all the money they pull out of the black community and what they don't do with us, then that's what I'm saying. Mr. Bryant, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He is ill-informed. And that is a great example because you and I know the real DNA of TV One that Comcast said, if you want to be on our platform, we have to own 40% of you. And then they had to take on a great deal of debt to buy that 40% back. Mm -hmm. And now the market cap is under $100 million of this publicly traded company because of the enormous amount of debt. And Kathy Hughes is a phenomenal entrepreneur, along with Alfred. They're terrific. But you can only get so far with that kind of debt. And that debt goes back to Comcast being predatory, which is why Mr. Bryant doesn't know. He doesn't even know how much money they're spending on licensing content. He doesn't know how little we get. He doesn't know how much. Tell me what we're paying into their system. Tell me the market cap of Comcast. It's $200 billion. Most of the money they get from cable subscribers are African-American. You cannot be the number one African-American provider, the number one provider of cable without hooking up all the black cities. What? So, I mean, listen, I know he means well, but there are just a lot of folks who just don't know enough not to speak up because they just don't know. When you filed a lawsuit, you yes. were highly critical of yes. the NAACP, National Urban League, Reverend yeah. Al Sharpton. Yeah, let's speak on uh, that. So and... they talk about that. So they say he filed, you know, he, he sued, you know, these folks. Well, what I was suing was, is I was saying that the Urban League and these folks, they did an MOU, a memorandum of understanding as to what black people will live by, right? But what they didn't tell black people is that David Cohen of Comcast sits on their board of, 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 the, Urban, Urban League. of the Urban League. What they didn't tell black people is that Comcast gives the Urban League a million dollars. So... Which you should tell black people. A million total, a, a million year, a year? A million a year. Okay. And what you should tell black people is that there is a conflict of interest. I'm getting money from Comcast, and that is controlling my behavior. Or it, it may not be, but it may be controlling my behavior. You need to tell black people, I did a deal on your behalf with somebody who pays me. What they, and the reason I sued them is because President Obama fought hard to achieve net neutrality. Who spoke out against net neutrality, Roland? Let them know. Was it a company? Was it the Urban League? Did they speak out against net neutrality? Yes or no? The answer is yes. Tell the people that. Yes. But net neutrality, you need that. Because if you don't have net neutrality, you don't have video coming out of Ferguson. But why mm -hmm. did David Cohen of Comcast want them to speak out against net neutrality? Because it, it challenged his business. It challenged cable. He doesn't want you watching video over the internet. He wants you watching video through his cable networks. And so here is the Urban League speaking out against net neutrality. That's like saying black people don't need food, water, and oxygen. So I sued to say, don't go out here and negotiate on behalf of black people without black people giving you that permission and without you telling black people that you're getting a million bucks from David Cohen on your board from Comcast and you're doing things like speaking out against net neutrality. I'm not going to allow that to happen. So I sued to put them in check to protect black people. That was the reason I did it. So they didn't like it, but guess what? They know I'm watching and they, I've also told them, every time you step out, I'm going to sue you. Here's the difference. I have a staff of lawyers who work only for me, litigators. So it's easy for me to sue people. I can bankrupt these guys. I mean, I don't want to hurt them. They're not my target. I could sue them every week. But I want to make it clear, you're going to have to do the right thing because what you're doing, you're hurting black people. That's what you're doing by taking these donations. And this is what I said to Tom Rutledge. Tom Rutledge, who runs Charter. I said to Tom Rutledge, and I talked about this on The Breakfast Club, and I talked about this at, at my website, The Griot. I said, Tom, 
He said, well, you sued me. But I said, Tom, I sued you when I saw you with Al Sharpton in a photo in the newspaper. And you said, I've got an MOU with black people. I've negotiated it with Al Sharpton and, and the Urban League. And I said, Tom, who is the white man that speaks for all white people? And if that white man doesn't exist, why do you think there is a black man who speaks for me and all black people? Why do you think there's some head black native that speaks for all the black natives? That is a racist idea. And that MOU is a racist, fraudulent document. So you believe that blacks, that civil rights organizations um, should not be entering into these type of MOUs uh, not if they're getting money from the person they're negotiating with. You have to be. You have to disclose that. So you. you so they got to say to you, Roland, Roland, I'm about to enter into a deal with Comcast. And oh, by the way, Roland, David Cohen sits on my board, and I get a million dollars a year from him. So you're saying that had that MOU been signed, uh, and with no and money going back and forth to those, with, with, no, with, no, with no money going back and forth, you believe that would have been a far more representative of the interests of African Americans yes. as opposed to money going to those specific organizations. That's right. I would I probably would have been cool with it. I probably would have said you didn't get any money from them. I'm cool with it. But if you get money from them, well, I'm not cool with because it. You, because, because you because you didn't disclose you, it. Or, 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 or do you believe that, that that essentially that money is payoff yes. for I believe, you agreeing I believe, to the merger? I sued them because I believe that money is a way to control your behavior. Why are you speaking out against net neutrality? I mean, look, let me tell you who Comcast is, okay? Let me tell you who they are. So once again, Mr. Bryant is totally out to lunch, has no clue as to what he's speaking about. He doesn't even know who they are. Let me tell you who they are. These are the same people who got caught by some very smart engineers in Northern California for deploying BitTorrent, a software to slow video down over the internet. And when they got caught, the FCC said, this is in violation of all kinds of federal laws. Personally, I think people should have gone to jail for that, okay? And, the, and, and, and Comcast said to the FCC, and the FCC hit them with a $20 million fine. And Comcast said to the FCC, F you, you don't police the internet and I'm not paying the fine. And I think even sued the FCC not to pay it. That's who they are. Okay? That's just one example of who they are. When they went to go get that merger done, to the approval to buy NBC Universal, you go to the FCC. There's the chairman and five commissioners. One of the commissioners, Meredith Atwell Baker, voted for the merger, voted for the merger, and then three months later took a job with Comcast. Okay? That's what you're dealing with. Billionaire Michael Bloomberg had to sue Comcast. Why did he have to sue Comcast? As part of the condition for the merger to buy NBC Universal, okay? They said, hey, Comcast, you own CNBC, a business channel. You need to take Michael Bloomberg's business channel and put it next to CNBC. Mm -hmm. They ignored that consent decree, and Michael Bloomberg had to sue because they took, they took, Com they took CNBC, put it on channel 50, and then they took Michael Bloomberg's channel and put it on channel 950. He had to go sue them mm -hmm. to go get his channel put on, you know, near their channel. This is who they are. These are, these are, you know, look, like I said, David Cohen has compensation about 20 million a year. He has 125 million a year as a budget. 125 million a year as a budget. They're only number three after tobacco and defense. To pay off civil rights organizations and politicians to keep the, you know, to do what they want. What are you doing that you're a cable operator, you have to spend that kind of money lobbying. This is not, this is, you're a cable operator. So at the end of the day, why go after this civil rights statute and, 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 and eviscerate it? And no, he's, he's incorrect. If they go and they make this a but for, then they have a right to, to discriminate against him and he will never get a lawyer to defend himself. What do you say, and I've had folks who reach out to me. Yeah. What do you say to people who say, Byron don't give a damn about black folks. All of a sudden, now he's pro-black. What do you respond to those critics? Because the, they're there. The, and, and be there. And you should be there. But you should also be there with everybody, including your so-called civil rights organization. Take me out of it. You can say whatever you want to say about me. And I can't control what you say about me. This is not about me. This is bigger than me. 
This is what are you going to do to protect your civil rights? What are you going to do to protect your civil rights? So when, so, but, but, so, but, but, so when your but, critics but, say but, 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 this no, is Byron I mean, no, trying no, to enrich no, himself. No, no, but I want to speak to that. Go ahead. But, but I want to give the answer that I, want, that I think is the healthy answer. Don't get into Byron's this, not black enough, black here, went black there, blah, blah, blah. That, that's all nuttiness, okay? This is not about that. This is about what are you going to do about your civil rights? Now, let's look at my company, right, and my resources and look at what I've done. I could have used my resources to do a lot of things. But what did I do? First thing I put on is a Monday through Friday show. I put on six judges, six of them, daily, for an hour. Judge Ross, Judge Karen, Judge Hatchett, Judge Maybelline, Judge Christina Perez. Five hours a day, black and brown people, as judges, running things. That's an amazing image, right? Mm -hmm. What's a better image than sitting there on the court and running things? Five hours a day, I invest millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars to produce, distribute, and promote those images of African Americans. NBC Universal, they've got talk shows where black men are dancing around going, hey, I'm not the baby daddy. Hey, it's not my DNA came back, I'm not the baby daddy. Now, this is what I've said to white executives. I said to a guy, I said, he said, why does it need to be black owned and not black targeted? I said, because, listen, I said, you have your daughter and mine, right? I said, do you, would you okay, are you okay if I control her image, how she's produced and depicted and seen around the world? Can I control her self-esteem? He said, no. I said, why can't you control mine, my daughter's? Uh, you know, that's why I have a seat at the table. I have to have a seat at the table. So when you look at nobody on planet Earth, seven billion people on this planet, has put forth stronger, positive black images than me. Five hours a day of judges. That's not by, that's not by accident. That's by design. Because I don't want to just see black men dancing that they're not the baby daddy. But I don't need to answer that and, and you know, defend that because it's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. And it doesn't matter. What matters what? It doesn't matter what you think of Byron Allen. The only thing that matters, if you want to have an intelligent conversation, mm -hmm. what are you going to do to protect your civil rights? I didn't bring this to the Supreme Court. They did. And they brought it in partnership with Donald Trump. The same Donald Trump who had to sign the largest racial discrimination and housing lawsuit settlement with the United States government, who brought the lawsuit against him. That's who Comcast partnered with and then walked into a courtroom and said, take our some of our time and plead against these, uh, this civil rights statute and let's, play, let's bring black people back to 1865. See, he is ill-advised and, 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 he, and he's not on point because, listen, they get us in the schoolroom and they get us in the boardroom and they get us in the courtroom long before he gets choked to death in the street. So I ask you, so, so you talked about those five hours of programming moving forward. Yeah. As you've gone through this, um, any plans for um, a black news network, t entertainment network? Uh, any plans to expand? The you, say, you say you own the, the grill. I own the grill. Any, any plans to yeah. uh, expand that to yeah, build, we're gonna to build invest, that out? We're going to invest heavily in, in the grill. We're going to invest heavily in that and build that up. You've owned it for how long? I've owned the grill now, I don't even know, a couple of years. I've, I bought it maybe three, four years ago. I don't remember. We've been, that, that's what I've been spending more of my time, buying companies. Mm -hmm. And I've been buying companies. As you know, I bought the Weather Channel last year, and, you know, we got them back on Verizon. We won our first Emmy. We've had our highest ratings since 2012. Um, you know, that's been phenomenal. That asset has been a phenomenal acquisition for us. Uh, we bought a movie distribution company. We've been buying television stations. We now, uh, we have 15 television stations in 11 markets. We're planning, you know, at this point, we, we will be the largest owner of big four network affiliates in the world. Uh, we'll probably have achieved that goal within 36 months. Big four network affiliates, ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox. Uh, we're in real estate, you know, we're going to go into banking. Uh, we're not going to just be held to media, so we will be, every, you know, media, real estate, banking, because at the end of the day, this is, you know, this is an opportunity to really achieve that, that fourth and final chapter that Coretta told us that this is the reason Martin was king, was killed. Martin Luther King was killed because he was pushing, pushing for economic inclusion. 
And, you know, you know, it's so ironic when, he, you know, he sits there and says, this isn't, this is commercial. Blah, blah, blah. It's like one of the things that's going on here, and this was one of the issues that I had with President Obama, and I said to President Obama, I've given you money, and I, my money has strings attached. I, you, you spent $700 billion to bail out the banks. I want you to audit the banks and see if they're lending money to African-American mm -hmm. entrepreneurs like Mr. Bryant. And he wouldn't do that. And I said, the other issue I have with you, Mr. President, because I knew that African-Americans were not getting bank loans for business loans and, and, and right. home loans. I said, the United States government has a pension fund that's over a trillion dollars, right. over a T. And not one African-American manages one penny of that money. And the reason why I sued to make sure that we opened this pathway is so guys like him don't struggle and they get access to capital and they can actually not talk about having scale, but actually have scale. What happens if you... I have scale. I know how to get scale. What happens? And I know that there are a lot of wonderful African-American entrepreneurs out there that are going to get flushed down the toilet because they will, they're positioned to fail and they're never going to achieve scale. They'll dream about it. They will talk about it. But the way the game is rigged and the way the game is positioned, they're positioned to fail. I have achieved scale. And I'm sitting here saying, hey, black community, this is how you do it. The door is closed, and I'm going to tell you how you bob and weave around that. Because, by the way, if I wanted to, I could say nothing. And I could keep my mouth shut. And if, like my mother always says, listen to what they don't say. Listen to who's got a lot of money and they're not saying a word. What Those are the ones you need to ask what's going on. <laughs> what happens if the court doesn't rule in your favor? What do you do? I think they're going to rule. Well, first of all, let me be really clear. They pretty much, this is what I've always said day one. Day one, I've always said this. I always said this. Our case is going forward. And they pretty much said that today on the bench. Hey, this case, this case needs to go forward. I've always said my case is going forward. I've been out here doing all these talk shows. Saying, so, again, hold on, the people who are watching. So, the Supreme Court rules in your favor. Yes. Does not mean that you win the case. Yes, that's right. They're ruling in the favor that I can go forward with my case against Comcast and start right. to get discovery and start to show that they're not doing business with African Americans in a fair and equitable way. That P. Diddy should have Philadelphia. He, P. Diddy should have 20 million subs, not less than 10 million subs. He should, his, his sub fees should be doubled. There are other people who don't even get sub fees. That they should be positioned to succeed, not fail. So my lawsuit is going forward. And I've always said I have brought forth enough evidence for it to go forward. My lawyers are the best in the business. They always put forth my case at the but-for standard, the higher standard. So whether they choose motivating factor or but-for, I'm going forward. It was Comcast who chose to challenge the civil rights statute of 1866. So I started doing every radio show and talk show to speak to black America and say, our civil rights are under siege. My case was always going forward. What I want to do is protect the Civil Rights Act of 1866 because I want to make sure the door isn't shut to you and that brother sitting there who doesn't quite know what he's talking about. Last question. No, keep that, asking me questions. I like hanging out with you. No, no, I got you. Okay, but, uh, but you got to... It's but, the but, internet. But, we but can my, hang here all but, night. But my, my crew got to go home. Well, come on. They, <laughs> they're not complaining. They got to go I, home. I flew all the way now, from now, LA. The I flew all the way from L.A. to hang out I, with you. Will, and you got like, okay, I, last question. I, what I, you got? I would be more than happy to take your check to pay them. I'm just saying. I'll be more because I ain't got Byron Allen money. I am right here. I'm ready to hang out with you. You, I'm having a good time, bro. I'm a big fan of yours. I appreciate it. I want it. you to bring it. I want I you to bring it. the hard questions. Because if you bring the hard questions, then we I want everybody in America to innately understand what's going on. Dr. King told us, two Americas cannot survive. That's what got him killed, that speech, the other America. There are two Americas. What does it matter if I can sit at the same lunch counter as my white counterpart and I cannot afford the same hamburger? And what's really important, he said that over 50 years ago and it's as if he wrote it yesterday. And what has to happen now, 
because we have all we have half the women in this country living at or below the poverty line mm -hmm. at or below half okay you have over two and a half million kids in this country that are homeless okay we only have 330 million people in this country only have 330 million people in this country out of a global population of 7 billion people and as the global population goes from 7 billion to 10 billion the bottom 5 billion are going to get wiped out because we don't have enough food, water, and resources to support the bottom five billion. They will perish. You have global warming, climate change. Mother Nature is going to just obliviate the bottom five billion. Now, here is the problem. China, China has the equivalent of two-thirds of our country in college. 200 million kids in college. And everybody knows the capital will eventually follow the intellectual capital. They're developing intellectual capital at a much faster rate. So what are we saying there? We're saying exactly what Martin Luther King told us, taught us over 50 years ago. And this is what we have to come to grips with. White America, white America, white America is no longer enough to compete globally. Mm -hmm. And white America has 99% of the wealth in America. So white America has the most to lose as we sink globally. And every day we're sinking and white America is losing the most. Now for white America to survive, white America now has to make sure every American is fully engaged and every American has access to a real education and every American has access to capital and every American is bringing their A game so we are competing globally to maintain our position and our wealth. Well, and what well, we now, I, I, now I, I'm we have not to, sure they want to do that. Oh, but, but hold on. It's a matter of survival for white America. So this isn't a black problem. This isn't a white problem. This is an American problem. And as Martin Luther King taught us, we have to have one America. And we're now at that point where we must achieve that in order for this country to maintain the status that we currently have. We have to achieve one America, and every American has to be fully engaged and fully positioned to succeed and to keep our position in, in this global economy. Have the other black owners of networks communicated with you and said we stand with you? Uh, <laughs> you said that's a hard question. No, that's a hard question. No, it's not the hard question. Uh, let me just say yes. Let me say yes. They know who they are. They know what they're not getting. They know. Everybody. Look, this is why, the, this, is why this is a historic case. We're not going to have this conversation again. This is our reciprocity. This is why we didn't get 40 acres and a mule. The greatest trade deficit in America is the trade deficit between America and black America. America is not doing business with black America anywhere. Now you have this law to level the playing field and get them to the table. And now that you can get them to the table and say, guys, we got to correct this because this is economic genocide. Mm -hmm. You're not doing business with us the way we do business with you and people in our neighborhoods are dying. We, you know, you're making sure we have plenty of gangs and drugs and alcohol and you know, we don't have enough books for our kids. So now we're going to start to deal with the fourth and final chapter. That's what this is. Yes, it started as a commercial dispute, but they, Comcast, escalated it to a civil rights dispute because I never would have challenged. And I told them, I said, don't do this. Now, here's the thing. I don't believe we should boycott Comcast, and I don't believe we should dismantle Comcast. I don't believe... but. They have upset civil rights organizations, and they have upset every civil rights organization without exception. And those civil rights organizations and politicians are completely dedicated to breaking them up and going after their top advertisers and boycotting their top advertisers if they advertise with any of the Comcast networks. I know that from all of them. They have lit these civil rights organizations up like a Christmas tree. That was not the intent. I have tried to get them to the table. I have said, guys, let's get to the table. Let's work this out like a commercial dispute. Let's work this out. Charter said to my government, re government relations person, we're not going to talk to Byron because we don't negotiate with terrorists. Okay? You know what my government relations person said? David, you know, David is white. 
And David said, look, I represent Charlie Ergen. Charlie Ergen is white and he runs Dish. And Charlie is far more aggressive than Byron. Uh, yeah, Charlie Ergen is one of the most aggressive people in and the business. And I love business. Charlie. He's a good guy for me. With me, I do a lot of business with Charlie, okay? And Charlie is a good guy and he's tough. And he says, you know, I've seen Charlie be much tougher with you than Byron. And you've never called him a terrorist. See, that's what happens. If a white man walks in and he's tough and he negotiates and hold his, hold his, his ground and takes what he believes belongs to him, that's business. That's just a shrewd guy. If you do it, Mar Roland, you are a terrorist. That's a racist statement right there. We don't negotiate with terrorists. Like, are you kidding me? But that's fine. We're going to push through that. We're going to... Re when I sued Charter, when I sued Charter, Charter had a board of directors of 11 white guys. 11 white guys. And I said to them, dude, really? 11 white guys got together every 90 days and said, this looks, this feels right to me? These guys, these knuckleheads didn't even have somebody that represented 90%, 60% of the global population. A woman. A woman. Let alone get the first base, somebody African American or Asian or gay or Hispanic or whatever. Like, they didn't even... They didn't even have a chief diversity officer when I, when I sued them. Truth of the matter is, I'm making these companies better. And I'm not talking about it. I'm using legal action to force them to do it. And when after they do it, then they're better. They're better. When you look at, uh, when you talk, when we talk about, when I look at jobs, look at opportunities. Yes. Are you, are you looking at Hollywood, looking at this entertainment industry, looking at the media industry and saying, I'm going to make sure that I am using my platform to elevate black talent. And is it is it intentional in terms of operational roles, P and L responsibility? I already have. Seems I already have. I don't I don't I already have. That's that's a get like I just said, who, seven billion people on the planet. Who puts on five hours a day of some of the most positive African American images out there? Five hours a day of, of judges running. And, and, and when I'm talking, also talking about and behind uh, the scenes as right. well. That's I'm the going easy to, part. I'm going to production companies. I'm going to again because like look, we had NABJ with a meeting today with AT&T. One of the things I talked about there was I said, look, uh, creating opportunities for Black media entrepreneurs. Yes. Not just Black folks who are in front of the camera. I said, but because yes. at the end of the day, who Roland. controls the yeah, narrative? Roland. That's I'm, it. Roland, I'm easy. I'm easy, mm -hmm. but I'm not enough. That's what right. the lawsuits are about. You need everybody. And be, before I forget, I want to thank Senator Kamala Harris, who generated the government uh, amicus brief, and she got Senator Booker to sign it, Senator Blumenthal to sign it, Senator Wyden, and eight members of the Congressional Black Caucus. And I'm highly confident pretty much everybody in the Congressional Black Caucus is going to lean in now. Uh, I want to thank uh, Congressman Bobby Rush, who is amazing. That letter that he wrote, and he made it very clear this is unacceptable, and he's calling for the breakup of Comcast. Once again, you know, I, I, I'm not asking for that, but he is... He is steadfast on that. Also, Dr. Bernice King, she's amazing. This is one of the first times we've heard Martin Luther King's daughter speak out. Her letter was heart-wrenching. When she wrote an open letter to Brian Roberts and said, what are you doing? This is what my... Th th my father died over this, and my mother dedicated her life to this. So, I mean, this is unnecessary. And I also want to thank Derek Johnson, the president of the NAACP, because I sued the NAACP because they signed that MOU. And, but that MOU was under that, the NAACP, that was Ben Jealous. And Ben Jealous sat, he, Ben Jealous apologized to me for signing that MOU and said, I'm sorry, brother, I thought I was doing the right thing. I said, I forgive you. I'm not upset with you. I love Ben Jealous. He just didn't know what he didn't know. Mm -hmm. Okay? We just have a number of folks out here. You just don't know what you don't know. Right? But Derek Johnson at the NAACP, he has really gone out there and he's pushing hard. And I have a lot of faith in Derek Johnson. And I love that brother and I'm supporting him. And he's a, he's a fellow Detroiter. So, I mean, look, at the end of the day, we can pretend like it's this or we can pretend it's like it's that. But at the end of the day, I don't want over 100 million minorities in this country to wake up and go, what happened with my civil rights? What happened? Well, they went to the Supreme Court and nobody told you and they just rolled you back. So, you know, this is important. Well, it is something that I definitely explain to people uh, yep. that I use all, use all the time that if you go to Washington, D.C., there's only one federal agency that shares along with the White House. 
That's the Department of Treasury. Yep. If you want to understand America, power and money, money and power. Yep. Uh, and what often happens uh, is that when we have these discussions about what African Americans need, typically what happens, and I was in Indianapolis uh, a few weeks ago with the state of black America, yep. and we focus on economics, we often talk about civil rights, mass incarceration, yep. police brutality, yep. and money and economic power is not in that top five. That's, that's what and, you need. And so, because I mean, at the end of the day, without money, you can't even control your own politics. That's it. You need an education and you need money. And that's why I got upset with Obama and I said, look, if you audit the banks to see if they're lending money to black people, African Americans, you will see we're not getting it because at the end of the day, that's why under President Obama, unemployment went down for white America but went up for black America. Mm -hmm. And home ownership under Obama hit a 25-year low. That screams we're not getting access to capital. African Americans, we're brilliant, we're resourceful. It's real simple. We're being asked to run the same race as our white counterpart without any tennis shoes. All we're saying is, can we get a pair of toilet tennis shoes so we can run this race? And if we get a pair of tennis shoes, we're going to do just fine on that track. And that's, we need access to capital. That's what this is about. And this civil rights statute is going to, upholding this civil rights mm -hmm. statute. And by the way, there isn't a coincidence that now that we're starting to use this civil rights statute, mm -hmm. they have to reevaluate it and see if it's ambiguous because it's been used to the tune. I've used it in three lawsuits and $40 billion. So right. now we're going to use this statute so we can make sure that we have economic inclusion for all Americans, especially African Americans, the furthest left behind, and we achieve the fourth and final chapter, which is One America. One America. That's what we're going to do here. All right. We do have to go. All right. Byron Allen. Are you going to hang with me? Because I don't know anybody no, here no, in no, D.C. No. Well, we can hang. You're going to hang with me? Come but, on, Roland. But, but they got to go home. Okay, but everybody got to go home. All right, folks. Back to our Goldmark Unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks. As the marijuana momentum continues, our good friends at MarijuanaStock.org have already reached more than half of their funding goal for the hemp CBD investment. That's right. If you want to take advantage of this great opportunity, you need to do it now because it won't last much longer. Now, if you don't know, I'm talking about the hemp plant, the good cousin to marijuana with a much higher concentration of CBD. That means hemp gives you all the medical benefits of marijuana without getting you high. Also, if you don't know, hemp farming is now legal in the United States, creating one of the largest commodities worldwide. It's just, again, an opportunity, an investment opportunity. And the folks at uh, 420 Real Estate, uh, their business model is very simple. They buy land that supports hemp CBD grow operations and lease it to licensed high-paying tenants. That's right. They are hemp CBD landlords, and you can get in on the action. As hemp continues to change the economic landscape, 420 Real Estate is allowing you to chase the American dream. Now, look, the best part is right now you can invest in this crowdfunding campaign for as little as 200 bucks. That's right. You can invest as little as 200 bucks up to $10,000. Do it now before the fund is closed. To invest, go to MarijuanaStock.org. That's MarijuanaStock.org. Get the game and get in the game now. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered.